Procedural rhetoric is a general name for the practice of authoring arguments through processes. Following the classical model of rhetoric, procedural rhetoric entails persuasion, to change opinion or action. Professor Bogust goes on to explain why he is suggesting a new domain of rhetoric here. The concept of rhetoric, which is the art of persuasion, comes all the way back from Plato and Aristotle in ancient Greece, back then mostly used to talk about and understand public speaking for civic purposes. But later, with the emergence of photographic and cinematic expression, there also became a need to understand and talk about these new non-verbal ways to tell a story and make an argument. How people could be persuaded by images to start thinking critically and hard about stuff. This kind of rhetoric was so different from the verbal one that it needed new words and constructs and a language of its own to try and grasp how it functioned. And this was subsequently dubbed visual rhetoric. And now, or well, back in 2010, Professor Bogus here was suggesting this new kind of rhetoric, procedural rhetoric. Because the words and constructs used to talk about and analyze verbal or visual rhetoric fell short to explain what this kind of rhetoric of interactive systems was all about. Rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric. <coughs> procedural rhetoric is a subdomain of procedural authorship. Its arguments are made not through the construction of words or images, but through the authorship of rules of behavior, the construction of dynamic models. Okay, so great. That's procedural rhetoric, which is like the basis of a persuasive game. But let us look at an actual example of this in action. One of my favorite examples of a persuasive game, and one that is cited in almost all the articles I've read about them, September 12th. In this game you are supposed to bomb terrorists in their own country, but bombs take a little time to drop and it is almost impossible not to hit civilians. And by hitting civilians, bystanders will cry for them and then turn into terrorists too. There is no way you can win this game. <laughs> Gonzalo Fraca who is from Uruguay and made this game in 2003, made it as a form of interactive political cartoon. And instead of using images and words, he was using the rules of the game to make a point about current events. It is a really nice, compact example of using the mechanics of a game to represent a system or process in the real world, letting the player explore this and then letting them reach their own conclusion. That last part is important here it seems, and one of the strengths of this procedural rhetoric. You leave the player to come to their own conclusions, or at least you make it seem that way, and when they do, that conclusion will hit them much harder and will have a far greater chance to stick with them than when you would have just told them about it. And what Fraka does beautifully here is just present you with the game mechanics and then he confronts your logic behind what you expect to happen as soon as you start playing it. This kind of twist or playing with your expectations is often called subversive game design. 